Hello and welcome again. So this is challenge briefing number eight and it's the last one in the series and all about communications and telling your story. So let me bring up my presentation and we will do it very shortly. So over the last four weeks we've had some brilliant guidance from our resident entrepreneurship guru, Dave Jarman, who's a senior lecturer at the University of Bristol, and also from our very own Henry Lucen Gore, the founder and CEO of Promoting Economic Pluralism. And that's the charity which is hosting this amazing pioneering program of events. I'm Terry Moyhuddin and delighted to be part of it all. Leading on comms for the festival, I'll be sharing insight that I've gathered from nearly 20, 40 years as a specialist helping large organizations manage change and engage audiences with impact. For those who've not been here yet, these challenge briefings are instrumental to um, having a structure and helping young change makers like you are to develop new ideas and just as vital if you've already got one to test them out uh, which is very very important that's been drummed through to everybody and don't worry if you've missed any because they're all recorded in our youtube channel and holly from our team has just put a link to this in the general chat lovely thanks holly because i'm keeping keeping the slides just like this for a minute until we've uh, finished all the bits with the chat so um you, and for, uh, I was saying about for those who have been here, you can pick up all the past briefings. But those of you who have attended previously, you'll see we've changed the layout of the workshop uh, to reflect the next phase of the programme. There are now two sections. One is test and develop and the other is hangout, which is as it says on the tin, just the way you can hang out and there's two tables there. The others are, are labelled with categories of the type of ideas you might be defining. And so that helps bring people together in a more visible way and uh, makes it simpler to find people who are thinking on the same lines as you are. Finally, if you want to see the slides in full, just click on the four little arrows on the top of the screen to expand it. Okay, and then we have the next thing is the agenda, and after that I will go into full screen. So the agenda will cover why communications is important, what's involved in submitting a proposal and presenting it if selected, and I know a number of you have already said like some clarity around what that does involve, particularly in submitting the proposal. How to use a couple of techniques to focus and structure your thinking. There'll be guidelines on good writing and how pictures can help. And finally, finally, I wanted to give you a few just a few tips on how to present yourself. But before I get stuck in, can I ask how much do you think you know about communications already? Using the chat on the uh, right of the screen, can you, on a scale of five, with one as not so much and five as loads, please can you say now how much you think you know already? And this is the bit I wanted to see, so I can do that. Oh, oh, three. Okay, that's good, Jonathan. Thank you. Two. Oh, not much at all. There's hope there. So uh, interesting. <laughs> Adam, I don't believe it. I've heard what you've said already and seen you in action. Okay, well, a good mix and interesting. So hopefully there will be a good uh, few takers takeaways for all of you. So let's begin. I shall put my screen into full screen mode so you can get the proper look of it. And let's go with why is it that communication is important? Well, I could do a whole presentation just on this, but I'm going to focus it on just a few key points. Basically, communication is at the core of everything about human experience. It impacts how we behave with each other and how we perceive ourselves. Good 
verbal and written communication skills, I really believe make the world go round because by learning how to get across to convey your thoughts, your emotions, your opinions, if you do that well, you can understand what's going on around you and be understood yourself. Dialogue between that, the exchange between everybody is, is essential to bind it all together. The third point there is a really key one for you as young change makers, as young people going into the world of work and, and developing careers is that communication is one of the top in demand soft skills for work from loads of studies being done recently. And so it will not only just help you get an interview because you'll have to fill in an application and write that well and sell yourself to get the job at the interview. So you need to present yourself verbally and calmly. And then when you get the job, you're doing it, you want to do it well. And if you want to progress, you need to use good, effective communications to help you get on in your career. The content of communications can be facts, ideas, as we've got concepts and opinions, attitudes, and as I said earlier, emotions. And all of these are critical in explaining what is at the key uh, heart of our challenge is in terms of explaining original thinking, which is what it's all about with our challenge. And finally, most significantly, again, for this festival and for the challenge, it is a very prime factor in assessing what will be judged as the most effective proposal at the earlier stages and very much at the later ones too. So that's the importance of communication. As I say, the challenge is to submit a proposal and that will be done on our your priorities platform that we're using. There's a link on this slide, which again, the lovely Holly is going to add to the general chat. So you can have a quick whiz and look at that whilst I talk it through. It's great to see that we've got a number of proposals already submitted and really dying to see more by the deadline of the 31st of August. And that is plenty of time to get something in. So hopefully you should be at the site by now if you are interested in looking at it and I'll talk you through anyway. The template you need to complete asks for first a, a brief summary. That's 240 characters, which is just under 40 words. And that should be a couple of sentences, just basically as an overview. Then you get to the proposal itself. The details of that requires a bit more, a wee bit more there, because what we're looking for here is to be included the critical factor of what makes it new. Why is it original? What's different about it? And you'll have about 1500 characters, and that's 300 words roughly to describe this. And there is a demo proposal that you can have a look at for a steer and also of course look at the other ones that are there already and do see if you want to comment on them because that itself is very much part of this whole process to share what we're thinking and then there's after the proposal details with why it's innovative it's about how does it respond to a the changes following the pandemic how does it relate to building back better after covid 19 and B, how it addresses 21st century challenges that um, uh, encompass socio-economic or environmental benefits. How does it do that? How does it take into account what's going on in the world today? And then you need a team name and you can add an image, which is highly recommended. You also have the option to upload a video plus there's um, opportunity to uh, have an attachment if you want to do that. The thing there with all of this is that have a look and you'll see as uh, the rest of the presentation how to go about writing this proposal. Now the next bit is about if your proposal is selected as a, a standout idea in the first round, you and your team will need to present it in a webinar. These presentations allow for six people on the stage at one time. Three of these will be panel members and the three others can be members of the team. And that includes a slide presentation if you're doing one. You can you can swap around as you want, you know, bring people up at different times and just decide amongst yourself what works best. 
the total time I put there is 20 minutes. It's 20 minutes or so because there will be some touring and throwing, you know, people coming and then going. But essentially, there'll be, uh, it'll be split with five minutes for you to make your pitch and then 15 minutes for the panel to quiz you. So all very interactive and very much having a dialogue as opposed to being, you know, having the third degree. Okay, so have a conversation. Keep that in mind. Now, how to get your ideas across? So the perfect elevator pitch. Imagine you're in an elevator. The doors open and Bill Gates walks in with a briefcase full of money. He says, He's heard you've got a great business idea. You're on the 18th floor. And by the time you get to the bottom, which is about 60 seconds, you, you need to convince him to invest in you. That's an elevator pitch. It's basically just a common phrase to describe how to spark interest and, and get something across to someone quickly and key simply. It can be a persuasive speech or you can use the technique in written form. You can use it to sell yourself, an idea, a product, anything really. I've broken it down to these three key elements. First, once you've um, agreed what your purpose for it is, is be human. People respond to people. So you need to show your enthusiasm and explain what excites you about the idea. And if possible, personalize things. For example, you, know, you could say so and so I li know lives in a village where they need clean water. I mean, that I'm not saying that is your idea, but it's that sort of a familiarity and to make it meaningful and memorable. It's you talking about a great idea and you need to bring it to life, basically. Second, it's about, it's all about distilling and getting across why you and your idea are worth investing in. Think of all the things that Dave Jarman has covered. And as I said, if you haven't seen them, don't worry, you can catch up on the YouTube channel. But it basically Dave was saying about from, from that first initial, what do you care about? What is it that matters to you? To then how do you understand why that should matter to anybody else? So you need to show you've thought through what your users, what your stakeholders need and Therefore, your idea, how it responds to that. And remember, it is about original thinking. So reflect. So it needs to reflect not just the fact that this is using the recovery after the pandemic to build back better, but also how it's going to impact um, social and political and economic issues. But in a different way. We're talking about creating the opportunity is here to shape the world in a different way so that we can have a better, more sustainable future. And that point there is also very much the thing you need to get across and quite simply is how will it make an impact? What is it? What's the outcome of what you're doing? And finally, again, related to being simple, but it is about being concise, you know, use um, clear language and be clear, uh, sorry, clear language and, and be precise. It's about not saying everything, but decide what are the most important things. It doesn't have to be war and peace. It just needs to prioritize. And my, my rule of thumb is if in doubt, leave it out. So if you do all this, your, your pitch will not only be quite clear, but also very compelling. Another technique which is very good for engaging audiences is storytelling, storytelling, because facts tell, stories sell. Sorry, I had to get that in. Um, basically, audiences need to go from, I don't just think, oh, don't, don't, don't. sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh dear, my fingers, fast fingers. So um, it's not, it's, it's thinking, the, aud the audience need to have in their minds that they don't just think it's a good idea, it's, they feel it's a good idea. The real key benefit of storytelling is about evoking emotion. So good stories, what do they have? They have a beginning, a middle and an end. And there's a plot, there's goodies and baddies, conflict, suspense, a resolution or a twist at the end. So one way to structure it in terms of how we need to use it is this, by having the setup of three sections, the setup, 
the struggle, the solution. The setup is all about setting the scene. It's the context. Who are the main characters? What's the plot? Keep it short and purposeful. And when you're presenting, try and put the audience into the frame, into the picture. Um, something on the lines of, I'm sure you'll know somebody in this situation, or and make the characters relatable. Our customers are people like, and they could be anybody that you think that the audience might know, as in the panel might know, or as a famous celebrity, it could be people like Greta Thunberg. The struggle then is the crux of the story. It describes the conflict and the confrontation that needs to provide specific and accurate details. So what is the problem? Why is it a problem and where and who for and when? And in terms of who is it um, uh, impacting, it's uh, really about detailing and defining, is it a community, is it individuals, is it everybody? Have you had a clear view of who's going to be at the end of what you're doing? And how are they feeling? So that's the other thing about making the emotional um, connection is make the conflict familiar to people you're talking to. For example, you see this all the time. You see this level of waste all the time. It's all about the emotional impact, not just the logical one. So you can ask your audience to imagine what it feels like when if you woke up with this or you couldn't get any packaging that wasn't plastic or whatever. The solution then is the thing. What's the idea? That's the idea, the strategy of the product to help the characters in your story overcome the struggle. So what if there was a way to, and it's, it's that light bulb moment to create suspense and also a sense of urgency. It needs ideally to be an exciting discovery and leave your audience feeling positive and hopeful. Key point to make here is don't race to the solution. The struggle is the bit that engages most because that's where all the, the, the real nitty gritty of the tale is. For example, imagine if Star Wars, the movie, you had the final battle right at the beginning. The rest of the story would be pretty wet, really, because it would just be and they all lived happily ever after. So keep that in mind. And another thing is um, have a look at examples of good storytelling that um, is, are available, particularly in the TED Talks. So there's a link there that I think Holly's going to put into the um, general chat as well for you to, when you have a chance, have a look. Words. So words, words, words. Great writing is an art, there's no, no doubt about it, but everyone, I do believe, can be good at writing with a bit of help because it is based on solid science. The first step is title, that's a headline. It's an important signpost to grab interest and reel them in. And then here are some key tips to follow for the content. First, don't dance around your ideas, get to the point. Instead of in relation to, say, about. Avoid lengthy sentences. Because if they're more than 25 words, it just gets difficult to absorb. I mean, you can do it, but it's just not pleasant or enjoyable. And a, another good rule of thumb, which goes alongside this, is that it should really be one thought per sentence. To keep the flow going and to, to add pace and interest, you should have short and longer ones mixed up. Avoid jargon or industry specific words and use words that people will know for for easy understanding instead of expedite say hurry instead of termination just use the word end the final point is is one i believe is very important in using the active voice which is far more engaging and gives writing direction while the passive voice is all about it's a bit vague and more sluggish and I will show you exactly why because here are some examples of active uh, versus the passive voice so on the left and passive on the right and Juan Carlos I saw you in the audience so I know I haven't put Carlos but I actually did pick this example because you did you posted a really great message on LinkedIn when we started a few weeks ago 
the point here, the difference between active and passive is this, that in the active, the subject, which is one, um, it's, subject is one, is before the action, which is posted, and the object, which is message, is after the action. Whereas in the passive form, it's the other way around. You've got the subject at the end, and that's the thing. It's kind of like da 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 by one, and that just makes it more dull. We understand that not everybody is uh, used to speaking English or writing English or as a mother tongue. So we're more than happy if you want it for you to come and check, um, not not check, but, you know, review your writing proposals and particularly your mentor would be your first port of call. But anyone of the festival comms team in particular would be happy to have a look if you'd like. And there you have it. A picture is worth a thousand words. Hopefully most of you have heard this saying. And what it means is that a picture can convey an idea much more quickly and effectively than the written word. Did you know the human brain can process images up to 60,000 times faster than words? So the point is with the picture, it's got so much information at once, much more than you you get with words. In fact, it can take a thousand words just to describe what is in one picture. So you can use pictures and images that can be photos or paintings or graphics. It's up to you. The main thing to remember is, is make it relevant. Or if not, you can also make it provocative, add intrigue, make people wonder why you chose it. And then that could actually be really good to use as a starter for tenor, a little icebreaker with the panel if you get selected to appear before them. It's something different for them to have instead of normal introductions. Now, as well as images, we've talked about uploading a video and you can do this to make your proposal even more noticeable. And from your iPhone, it's fine from your smartphone. Um, a few tips if you decide to do this are here. Lighting. Lighting is key because without good lighting, especially on a smartphone, the quality of your video will suffer. The best source is Mother Nature. I have a window with the sun coming in, but um, if you're indoors, it's best to get as many sources as possible. Background is about having a background that isn't too distracting. If it's it doesn't have to be totally clear or plain, as long as you stand out in front of it, as this girl with the nice yellow cardi and the stripy top is. And then if you are, if you direct a camera, so it's all about keeping it steady. And that can be ideally using a tripod, but for the ultimate steady and clear photo. But if you don't have a tripod, that's not a problem. Improvise. Try to find something that you can support your smartphone on, like a, a railing or a, a table or, as this guy has, a paper cup. Very ingenious. The fourth point there is about cropping and not zooming, which basically means that our smartphones, smartphone cameras are equipped with some amazing features, but the zoom function is, is not one of them. We, we don't have fancy lenses in the cameras. They use a digital zoom and it basically essentially guesses the details of the image. So it reduces the quality. Uh, so all you need to do is just move your camera closer and uh, zoom, uh, crop later. And the final point is a running theme here, but it is about keeping it short and sweet because the limit is 150 seconds on the submission for your proposal on your priorities. and and video needs to get to the point quicker than ever. Studies recently have shown, revealed that you have, what is it, 10 seconds to grab an audience without drop off in engagement. So do your best to keep it short and to the point. And there we have it, finally. So you've submitted your proposal and you're in the shortlist, hurrah, for doing the first round presentations. Here's a few tips to prepare yourself. First and foremost, just relax. The panel asked you to be they, there. They want to see you. So you should feel some confidence with that and relax enough to enjoy it because it is an opportunity for you to tell them about something that you care about. 
second point I can't say enough times is practice, 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 because as I said, you can decide with your team who's saying what and when, and if you'll have slides or not, and you can test the length when you um, do rehearsal runs, and you can practice with your friends or even record it if you can. And that will make a huge wealth of difference, because particularly in the other two points I'm going to go on to, which is about not talking too fast, and five minutes might seem a short time to convey a lot of information, don't, don't try and fix the dilemma by speaking quickly. Just take deep breaths and keep, keep calm. You, you know what you're talking about because you'll have practiced it and you'll have picked the key points. And that's again related to going off track. And that's the point about avoiding, avoid rambling because um, it's important that you come across as you do have a clear structure of what you're saying. And at the same time, you know, don't worry if you say something untoward or twice or something like that. That's not the end of the world. People are human and everybody respects that, and appreciates it. And finally, the point is be persuasive, be positive, have an upbeat sense so that you carry that energy through to who's listening to you. So keep your energy levels high and, and be confident and enthusiastic. Basically, smile. Because if you do smile, people do tend to smile back at you. And that's a it's just a good feeling. And the absolute final point, which isn't here, but is don't be afraid to take notes with you. Everybody does, does it. I'm doing it. I've got some bullet points here. And, and TED Talk presenters have notes. They actually go on stage with them. And also remember... All of this is something to try. You know? If you can just get up there and do it, it's a start. And you've got this opportunity with your team, with other teams and with your mentors, with us in the festival team, to have some really good opportunities to test it out with people who are going to be supportive. And that's a, a lovely opportunity which you should make the most of. And that, my lovelies, is a wrap. So I, I hope there has been some things there to um, help you. And um, um, I asked you at the start uh, how much you knew already. And so can I ask you now, what else do you know? Please, can you put it in the chat? And if you've got questions, can you put it in the Q&A, please? So what have we got? Anything in the chat yet? No. Oh, 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 oh. Hello. Ah, got some good Q and A's. Okay. Okay. So I was going to ask. Right. Right. I just just have a final look at the chat to see if there's any numbers there ah oh, yes yes that's good ah oh, there's a question that's come up in the chat from claire claire do you want to come up and ask do you mind do you want to just put your camera mic on and mic on she's asking how much should you personalize your presentation well, basically, it's what you're comfortable with. There's no parameters. I think she's having some technical issues here. Okay. So in answer to that question about how much the level of personalization should be is within your own comfort zone. You don't have to try and, you know, invent things that aren't something that you feel you can personally say. So I think um, a little goes a long way, but it's just having it not so that it's totally dry and in the third person, if you will. Um, there's another question here about, can I edit my proposal once it's been submitted? Yes, you can. After the 31st, you've got till the 7th of September, I think it is, to make changes and we will be also, other people will be looking at it to give comments and votes and 
there's opportunity there once it's but after the seven that's it for the initial proposal is it there's another question here is it better to be more formal or more casual when presenting our proposal generally is it better to be more formal i would say not it, i mean it's what it's in relation to that question that just was asked by claire that um um in terms of um formality or casualness it's what comes across naturally you don't have to pre pre pretend to be something you're not but what i'm saying is try and find something that you can use as a, a, a genuine view of what you feel like and would be happy to talk to a friend about or anybody and i do believe actually i would air not so much casual but relaxed and at ease because if you're formal it it it, it, it puts a bit of distance between you does the photo have to be what the one that i've taken that's a very interesting question and it is one that uh, has come up earlier as well in terms of copyright because uh, um, there's a lot of things that are up for grabs on the internet you can do google searches and it's all really easy to just use what there's that's there you have to check uh, sometimes if there is there will be symbols to indicate if there is a copyright issue we can always check it as well and uh i mean there's images that have um it does actually state if there is a copyright issue with it and there's another final question do we have to fill up the word count or is shorter better <laughs> i love it so do we have to fill up the word count or is shorter better well I think the word count is there and thought through for giving you the most flexibility and capacity to get your message across. It doesn't have to go to the actual um, limit of it by any means. If you feel you've said what you can, you want to say and you've tested it, and that is the thing, ask other people. When you have written your proposal, I totally adamantly would urge you to make sure you test it and get some feedback from your mentor from other teams and see if they or other mentors as well to see is there anything else that they didn't get and ask your you know if you've got friends as well you could ask them so um claire's back is it possible for you to put your uh, camera and mic on claire Because that's all you need to do as a mentor. I will wait for you to do that. Um, in the meantime, Carolina, would you like to come up? Because I'm going to ask one of our comms teams to come up in a minute. But before, Carolina, you are asking a question about can you use references to studies or other works in your proposal? And if so, does the referencing count as part of your allowance? Yes, it does count as part of your allowance. And yes, you can use it. You should, if you're using actual um, information or details that have been put together by somebody else, you need to acknowledge them. And that will be part and parcel of the word count. It's, it's, a, it's a technical, mechanical thing of what you can put on the actual uh, system. So I'm going to ask my colleague, one of the festival team, Holly, to join me now because I think I've done enough talking just on my own. And so, oh, Holly, hi. my dear, hi. hi. So, Holly's part of the comms team which I'm using, and uh, it's been a joy to to work with her. So, in the last six weeks to two months, um, I was going to ask Holly because we were chatting about it, just about her experience. What what does you think? What do you, what what do you think as a young person not being in professional communications before? What have you learned as key so, things? So, um, uh, just to like say what, what my experience with communications was nothing before because I was um, I am a student. Um, I've just finished my first year at university, and so uh, this whole process for me has been an unlearning process, if you like, um, because. I've been taught such a specific way of communicating my ideas. Um, very, I, I guess, and I, the subjects I study are very academic. They rely on um, a lot of like reading and uh, a lot of theory and studies. And so the way that you communicate is very 
Uh, well, to, for example, you would very much use the passive voice over the active voice, for one thing. It's not the most necessarily engaging. And so it has been a massive unlearning process of trying, of communicating and understanding that it's not always about um, writing, uh, but it is about engaging, which means a lot of listening as well and getting that feedback um, and using a lot of different channels, knowing your audience. There's, it's a massive um, thing and also realizing uh, how uh, how it feeds into so many aspects of life and definitely tools that you'll need for every aspect as opposed to just it's not just a one stream it's not just communications it, it feeds into everything. So has it actually seeped into your day to day life, Maureen? Have you found you do things? I would differently? definitely say so. Because yeah, I should just, just say sorry, sorry, just to say that Holly is very much focused on producing most of our social media posts and writing them and sometimes designing them along with another member of our team, Seema. But um, yeah, yeah, sorry, so to say that social media has been exactly. Your, so your I've been bag. doing a lot of posts for uh, we've our, our different channels ranging from like Twitter, Instagram, um, and Facebook, where it's whereas like setting up groups or events. But, and whilst I had uh, personal accounts on all of those platforms, um, I really hated it. I really, really didn't like social media. I, I think there's such, um, very much a personal thing, but I just, I don't like the, the, almost the commitment you have to give to it. The people, people rely on it. I didn't like it. I thought this is, this is not good. And I wouldn't reply. I was really, a really terrible replier. And so I think now um, it's about uh, kind of changing your mindset about what communication, communication uh, like, and communicating is and messages and now I'm so much better like just I think it's um a thing of realizing that you can become fluent in social media and communications and it doesn't it's not a massive commitment it's just something that uh you can almost enjoy now so I think for me it's a massive thing because it is mm. uh it's not so daunting anymore which was so it so was before so yeah because I think that's something I meant to get across earlier as well, that communication has been formalised a lot. And what we need to do often is come back to what comes naturally. And sometimes that is done with techniques, but it is a mixture of not so much you know, unlearning, but also doing it so you can actually feel like this is what you'd say to a friend or this is what you'd say to somebody if you really wanted to convince them of something. But it's having that awareness that there are were, uh, were, um, rules and things that can, can mm -hmm. help and you frame there's that. There's a massive pressure I think on social media as well to use it a lot to put certain things mm. out there but I think one other thing is it's been a massive uh, having the opportunity to really experiment and um, not feel that pressure but just put out if you get good feedback you you know to put that maybe out in the future and, and if not um, but also realizing that different things appeal to different people and as long as I think sometimes you're happy with what you put out there and you think it's the right message to get all along the right information it's all about tone and, and being as you say natural so I think that's something that's going to stay with me mm. a lot longer than just um, how long I've been doing it for so. Yeah, and, and tone of voice is, is, is something that is actually something that people don't often think about when they're, they don't often have to think about it because, you know, you're writing, whether you're, if you're at uni, you're writing to your lecturers probably, but not that often. Usually you're talking to your mates and that's on very casually. And um, as we were talking with Ying earlier, it can be sort of you know, one message can be broken up to three words on mm -hmm three different texts and stuff, which is totally different to talk about being casual about it, whereas a formal email to your lecturer, you would not you, you would want to show some respect and consideration. So somebody going back to that question about formality and tone, it's about, it doesn't really, yes, there is a need to show that you have a command of the language and no different words but everybody appreciates simplicity the most senior people the most sort of intelligent folk really like things explained in a way that they can absorb them i have a question that i see on the q a that i missed um about and it's a really good one from claire thank you about any tips about what to do if a presentation starts going wrong for example you lose your place or the technology goes wrong <laughs> also any tips for managing anxiety when doing a presentation 
all really excellent points to consider. And the first in answer to that is about things going wrong. Well, technology, I mean, for crying out loud, it's bound to happen. <laughs> There's been so many presentations which, because the connection wasn't there or whatever, and with our pioneering is one way of putting it, but it's the whole learning process that we've had with doing this festival because we know, and one of the, 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 the real good tips that have come out of this and still works is if your mic doesn't work, your camera doesn't work, go away and come back. Now, if you're in the middle of a presentation, it's not something you can control, you know, there's things in the ether that, and, and you just have to say, I'm really sorry and take some steps to rectify it for sure, you know, test some other cables or whatever it is that's not working. Um, and if that doesn't work, then what I would suggest, and I've always done this just because there's been so many times where technology particularly doesn't work is, is have a backup have printouts of things but obviously with Reem, with our situation that's not going to be the same thing what you can do is have it so that you've got them on notes and you can message them somehow or you can email it in a short way and arrange another time to do it because they if the technology goes wrong in our presentation stage then it'll go wrong for them too so it's not you know they, they won't have anything to actually um, review if you're not able to present it. So it will be a matter of rearranging it. I think in terms of managing anxiety when you're doing it, it's a very, very good um, question about physically do take deep breaths are really good before you start from anything. It's, the deep breaths are basically they feed oxygen, oxygen to your brain. The more oxygen you have in your brain, the more at ease you feel. So take some deep breaths. I've not um, been uh, active in doing yoga for a long while, but the, the whole thing about meditation and centering, it, it's, it, it's there for a reason. It's been there for thousands and thousands of years. So it helps people connect and feel centered. And if you feel centered, you feel less anxious. So it is about trying to find some calmness and also I would say you know, drink water, water you, you, you do find, you can get easily dehydrated because you're nervous and you know everything sort of dries up. So have some water, that also refreshes you and take moments to use pauses. You don't have to race through it all. And as I say, have notes and have have things that are there as, as um, support. So you've got also, Cracky, what am I missing? Your team, you know, you have each other. I mean, I've got Holly here, which is great because, you know, you can ship in any time, but if you've got, if you're not doing it on your own, then you have your team. If you are doing it on your own, maybe you could also line up somebody else to come and speak with you. There's no harm in that. You know, it could be your idea, but you could double head it. But that's, that's maybe a bit more elaborate than needs to go. In terms of managing anxiety, I think it is about building up your own confidence. And the way you do that is practice what you well, believe in what you're saying, practice it, practice it again. I definitely agree with it. everything you said. I mean, so, with uh, one thing that, uh, one opportunity that I've had over the past few weeks is um, being able to present and host some of the speakers and at the beginning that seems like a very daunting yes. thing to have um, you know, these experts who know what they're talking about and uh, I very much don't, I'm there to learn as well and all you can see when you're presenting is um, the little number at the top of the screen just seeing how many people can, who are watching you and I think that um, can give a lot of people a lot of anxiety but as Terry says a little bit of preparation not even necessarily too much because you have to go with the flow and I think it becomes easier I certainly have found it becomes easier um, and you just slow it down which is another thing I've learned but um, yeah and people want to hear what you're saying which so yeah, yeah. I would say everything you said is very natural yeah Oh, good. I think the, there is the fear. And again, I would really reiterate that this you're in a safe place here. You really are. Nobody wants you to fail. And as Dave said in, I think, the, the uh, last presentation this earlier this week was all about, you know, don't be afraid to fail, actually. But you can do that before you're actually in front of the panel, you see. You can actually do it and then learn from that. And that gives you, you've kind of got the contingency worked out then. So use the testing ground. We're here to help. And we'll catch you if you fall. So 
that's the thing. Any hours? Oh, oh, we've had references. Um, I suppose that's about it for now, I think. Um, uh, just one other thing, I suppose, Holly, was um, was there somebody, you know, if you're, when you're at school and when you're at work or at uni, was there a difference with how you felt in terms of who, who can speak up and who can, you know, do you have a feeling that you will have more confidence yeah, when you go back? I think to there's a lot after. of um, takeaways that I'll have. I'll have from this in terms of like transferable skills I mean definitely just um, becoming more fluent on different channels um, but also um, I think knowing uh, that the, the things that matter the most um, such as like tone um, and listening which is a massive thing um, and not just thinking you have something to say but really engaging with what's be already being said and also in response to what you say so um, I think these are the big things um, that uh, I would I will probably take, but it's a, a big mindset thing I think for me in terms of um, putting yourself out there a bit more. So I think that's the biggest thing. And um, actually, you, you and it's a really good place to end actually because the really really big thing that we're asking people to do in this festival is is change the future. I mean, how good is that? If you can do any little thing that makes a big a, a difference, that will be a big step forward because things need to change. The ecological crisis isn't going to wait for us to not do anything. And having a conference like this is a start of having people from across the world actually collaborating and thinking through ideas. Earlier on today, listening to a team that included somebody from um, the Philippines and India and Germany and um, uh, Gosta UK and and what was the third one uh, Hong Kong yes so there were people there and that would not have happened so this is a really good thing to take away in terms of sharing what you're learning and using it to communicate it wider thank you ever so much for your time I just realized I haven't said anything about the <laughs> workshop exercise so I shall just move on to that thanks Holly I'll come back to just get my screen share up and da, 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 da. okay let's um okay here we go okay so your mission should you choose to accept it is for this afternoon or whatever time it is where you are to use an idea of your own if you've got one or if you haven't don't worry we've got a few that um, you could imagine you invented one is having the idea of charity thrift shops as they're called in some of the world uh, which are really good for recycling clothing obviously but also you can get some great fashion tips out of that there's social media for startups that has made a lot of difference to young social enterprise entrepreneurs and of course reusable products have been in the frame for a little while now for example um new cups which you can reuse time and time again and then i would like you to use one of the techniques i've talked about the storytelling or the elevator pitch to think through that idea and frame it so you can present it and the third thing is then go and do that go and pitch it to one or two mentors and get their feedback and then in fact what would be good if you get the feedback from uh the first mentor and then try it differently with another mentor and see what the reactions are one thing I'll just tell you as a as just a funny thing is um, there's a very uh, famous magician, Darren Brown, and he beat 10 um, uh, chess masters. Because what he did, talk about learning quickly and passing it on, is he had 10 chess masters playing chess and he went from one to the other to the other. What he did, he just did the same move as the one before. And guess who won? He beat nine. I think he beat all, I know he beat all of them. So there you go. It really works to learn from what you get as feedback. Thank you, everybody. And I'm going to take a break now for five or ten minutes and be back um, to set you off on this exercise. Okay. Goodbye for now. Thank you for your time.